Hello there. <clears throat> I've been doing some videos on firearms on my channel. That will continue. They won't be regular, but as I see things that I would like to talk about or uh, uh, hopefully in the future maybe I can do some shooting and stuff like that. Uh, but just when I get an idea of something that I want to talk about, then I'll post. But I want to talk today about EDC or everyday carry and kind of my philosophy of it and uh, it comes from the fact that I'm 55 years old, soon to be 56. And uh, I, I've dealt with firearms pretty much all of my life since I was 10 or 12, something like that. And uh, so I'm comfortable I'm kind of set in my ways that kind of thing but there are guys out there that have an EDC and they've got you know uh, I have a friend that has a pack basically a, a small pack that a lot of times he'll take with him uh, that's got a lot of stuff in it you know uh, some guys get very elaborate with an EDC uh, for me I keep things basic and simple. One of a couple of the reasons is, first of all, I live in a very small town, and yeah, we got MS-13 here and stuff like that. So I could run into a difficulty that, uh, you know, I might need some other stuff for. But in my opinion, you cannot possibly predict everything, and I have to, in my opinion, err on the side of trying to have enough but at the same time you know I don't want to carry 40 pounds of gear around with me everywhere I go uh, in my opinion I make it a point to carry my farm with me everywhere I go okay uh, daily constantly I think that's important I think everybody should own a firearm and know how to use it. Now, this is the United States. And I know some of my European friends don't understand that kind of mindset. You need to understand something about this country. The firearm is something that is deeply embedded into the history of this country. Uh, our country is larger than a, a great many countries. Uh, our states, some of our states are as big or bigger than some of the European countries and uh, other countries in the, in the world as well. And uh, places like Wyoming, places like Texas, places like California, uh, the West, when this country was first being uh, developed, when we were first beginning to grow and become a country, there were huge tracts of untamed land with all kinds of dangers and hazards and it was that firearm that uh, the American people carried with them that made all the difference in first of all their survival and second of all knitting a country this size and this with this much variety together because I mean even now if you look at our country the, the southern half of the United States versus the Midwest versus the northern parts of this country uh, the, the languages the dialects the the uh, attitudes the uh, uh, the way that people live and interact and all that are so varied and different that uh, you know it's like Move going to different countries, moving across this vast country that we have, and the firearm was central to holding it all together and winning independence when we finally did get it all together. And the thing of it is, is that's ingrained into the American psyche in a lot of ways. And I, like I said, I know a lot of people don't understand that, but you know. We're not playing the Old West. Our people are not crazy. Uh, we're not reckless. Most of the people, 99.9% uh, .9 of the 
people that own firearms here in the United States own them legally, they obey the laws, uh, they are productive members of society, they're not crazy enough to go out and shoot somebody, uh, they're not looking to start a fight, they're not looking to prove anything by putting a bullet in anybody, they're just average ordinary people that believe that they have a right to defend themselves in a world where, let's face it, it's more and more dangerous every day. So, you know, if you can't understand that, you know, uh, just try to bear with me. And if not, you know, if I lose some subscribers because I'm doing firearms videos from time to time, you know what? I love you. I appreciate every uh, one of my subscribers, but I'm an American. And I have a right, a Second Amendment right, which is just as important as all the other amendments. And matter of fact, the Second Amendment is what keeps all of those other amendments safe for me, even against if if it came to it down to it, my own government trying to uh, subvert me and control me and uh, 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 what is the term? A tyrannical government. You know, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I'm not laying up at night worried about it, but, you know, there's a lot of people and a lot of countries in history that didn't think that was going to happen to them either, okay? There's a lot of reasons we uh, hold that Second Amendment dear. And so, and, and I didn't mean this to be a Second Amendment uh, speech, and I'm not trying to, but I'm just trying to explain the reason that firearms are so important to me. I was raised with them, I understand them, they are uh, not only a, a, a means of self-defense, defending myself and my family and anyone else that's around me innocent, okay, but they're, they're, they're a joy to shoot. If you've never really actually spent an evening out or an afternoon out at a range somewhere firing guns, it's flipping fun, dude. <laughs> I mean, I know a lot of people don't see that, you know, uh, but try it sometime. You might be surprised, okay? But all of that, I grew up with hunting and all of that, you know. There was a period of time, I don't hunt anymore because, one, everything hurts on me. So getting up at 4.30 in the morning and climbing through the mountains, hauling a big flipping rifle, and then trying to drag a 200 pound deer or 150 pound deer out of the woods, you know, I'm done with that. <laughs> That's one, but number two, I'm a, more of a photographer now and I would rather go out and shoot them with a camera and then maybe come back next year and do it again. You know, I, I, I'm of an age now where I've gotten older and I would rather just let them live. And enjoy their their life, and 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 be able to, for myself to enjoy uh, watching them and observing them and photographing them. So so that's that's where we're at with that. I don't have anything against anybody that, that hunts. I'm not one of these people that's an anti-hunter or anything like that. I think if it's done uh, conservation-wise, okay. Uh, one of the reasons hunting is allowed in this country is because if it weren't. You'd either have to pay a whole bunch of people to go out and slaughter a bunch of deer or whatever it was uh, that's causing problems. And then, you know, the meat probably wouldn't even be used. They'd probably burn all the carcasses and stuff like that. There are areas in this country where hunting is banned that that has to be done because otherwise people would be going down the highway and a deer would be flying through their windshield because there's too many of them. So there is a conservation and a game management part that hunting plays. But also there was a time in my life when I fed my family in the winter time when everything was scarce on venison. Okay, That's how we ate and got through the winter. So subsistence hunting also is not an issue for me. So anyway, I didn't mean to go on, off on a big rant about all of that. I just kind of want you to understand where I'm coming from and what my background is and why I think the way that I do. And so 
you know, when you talk about EDC or everyday carry, I live in a small town, a, a very rural area. There's farms all over the place, okay? Countryside, that kind of deal. Now, yeah, I live in a town or city. I believe Front Royal is still a town. Uh, and there's, I think, 14,000 people, something like that here. Uh, but it's spread out. For one and for another most people you know like I said we do have some of the gangs and stuff like that but if you uh, aren't messing around places that you shouldn't be and most people know around here where those places are you're pretty much okay uh, and so for me I, the only thing that I don't carry that I probably should is like a tourniquet a tourniquet kit I should carry one of those but, and, and I would encourage anyone that, that carries a firearm professionally, or not professionally, but um, regularly and consistently to consider some kind of first aid kit, tourniquet deal, or anything, or anything like that. But for me, I, I, need, I want it to be light and simple. I don't want to have to spend a half an hour trying to take things on and put things on before I can leave the house, and stuff like that. So there are basically three things in my pocket that I carry all the time. The first one, of course, is my keys. When you say your keys, what about the keys? Well, I can, I need my keys. I need my car, I need my house keys, and all that, so that's always in my pocket. But it, it also can be a defense. So I carry my keys, and the second thing that I always carry is some kind of small light. Now this is a, a larger light, but I have two other small lights. But this is made by Energizer. And I think I got four of them for like 10 bucks at the tractor supply store. I guess they were banging them out. But it's a really decent light. It takes three AAA batteries and it's bright as crap. It's got a, a bright setting and a not so bright setting. Uh, and it's just small enough that it carries in my pocket really well. And to be quite honest, if you've never carried a flashlight with you, uh, you'd be surprised how often you use the thing if you have it with you. And the thing with, with these are, you know, I'm not using the flashlight on the end of my gun, okay? If I'm in the dark anywhere, it's usually probably going to be around my house. Uh, and I'm outside looking for somebody or something, whatever's making the noise that I don't know what it is. Okay, so I'll have a big mag light or something like that that I can use to uh, actually see what's going on. But also, you know, if uh, if something happens with my gun or something like that, I can beat you over the head with it and settle things pretty quick. So, you know. That's the second thing that I carry is a good flashlight, a decent flashlight. Now you can pay a lot of money for a flashlight. I know guys that are carrying hundred dollar micro flashlights around in their pocket and, and they're brighter than this uh, you know a spot on the sun or something like that. You know wrong with that if that's what you want. But for me a simple light that's good and bright uh, is all that I need to do what it is that I'm gonna do with a flashlight. And the third thing that I always carry and if you're a country boy and you don't carry it, shame on you, is a knife. Now, I'm old school and I prefer the old, old design pocket knives like this. This is an old Schrade, USA Schrade's got the Scrimshaw, it's a Scrimshaw series. I've, I have a restoration video of it on this uh, YouTube channel. If you want to watch it, but it's just it's just a single blade, and it, this one actually has a liner lock in it. It's small. No, I don't need a big tactical knife. I don't need a knife this blooming long. I, I'm not planning on getting a knife fight. I'm not trained in a knife fight. You know, I would. I I am a martial artist. Okay, I would rather attempt to. I would rather either shoot the guy if I have to. Or run 
Because there's no shame in that. If you, if I know that I can defeat the person anyway, or that I could shoot them and kill them, if I know they're really not a threat to me, if I want to deal with them, then if I turn and run from them, I'm choosing to save their life. And that's an honorable thing. And I don't have a problem running from a fight. Sorry. Uh, if, if the person backs me up and gives me no choice but to pull a trigger, then that's what it'll be. But I'll do whatever I have to do to keep from having to shoot somebody. I'll run if I have to. Uh, and that's just my philosophy. Uh, I don't know, you know, some of you younger guys might, and some of you older guys might talk tough and say, well, I'll just put a bullet in it. Well, you know what? If you don't give me any choice, yeah, I'll shoot you. You're not going to hurt me. You're not going to hurt mine. But yeah, I don't want to kill nobody. If you've never killed anybody, and I've never killed anybody, uh, all i got to do is read and look at uh, the aftermath of some of the people that have shot people killed people. I have a father-in-law that was in World War II and he lived to be 96 and before he died he was asking if God would forgive him for all the things he did in World War II in the middle of a war because he had to, to kill. There wasn't any choice. I don't want that on my conscience if I don't have to. But if it comes down to my life, my family's life or, or an innocent person's life, you better well believe, Skippy, that I'll put you down. Okay. But anyway, the third thing, that those three things I carry all the time. And then, of course, my 1911 and a mag pouch with two spare mags. The magazine in the firearm is loaded with Federal Hydro Shocks that I've had for many, many years. Uh, there, it's 230 grain Federal Hydro Shock. Uh, the uh, gun store was out of the Federal Hydro Shocks when I went to buy a new box, so I bought a box of the Federal Premium HSTs. These are the 230 grain, I believe. Yeah, and uh, the other two magazines are loaded with the HSTs, but, uh, and that's it. That's my everyday carry, and I always have a hat, unless I'm in a suit, you know. And for me, it works. I'm comfortable with it. Uh, I have my firearm. I have spare ammunition in case of a, a, a malfunction or something like that. Uh, I have a knife I, to uh, deal with anything I need a knife for because like I said I'm not doing a knife fight okay I'd rather kick you in the face and run okay or uh, or anywhere else I can get you at uh, and a, a light you know and my keys and and also I always have my wallet with the ID and my uh, CHP uh, with me so that I'm always legal bless you I'll talk to you later.